Welcome to the second part of this tutorial. If you haven't seen the first part yet, please follow the link down here or in the description to see it first, because the second part will build on what we did in the first part. So in the first part, I showed you how to take a map from Asker's Fantasy Map Generator and import it into Quantum GIS. We worked a little bit there, but in this tutorial we will make additional work in Quantum GIS and then we will import all of this into Mapbox Studio. You can also use other tools like your own tile cache server or you can use other uh, client front ends like Leaflet or Open Layers. I will be using Mapbox simply because it is the most easy and the most fast to show how everything works. We are not using the QGIS server for this because while it is relatively easy to set up, it is mostly geared towards raster data, but we are working with vector data. And Mapbox is a very easy tool to use for uh, vector tile caches. So what is a vector cache or vector tiles? The idea is that in order to serve a large, very detailed map on the internet, you cannot serve the entire map as one file. Imagine Google Maps where you have the entire world in small details down to the street level. This would be way too much data to send to someone who just wants to check the nearest restaurant. So we split the world into tiles, into small squares of just the area that we are looking at in the web browser right now and we serve only these tiles. That's what the server will do for us. And all we need to do is give it the data in a format that it can use. And we have already prepared this very good because uh, GeoJSON is one of the formats that Mapbox, for example, can use to build the tile cache. Format. As I mentioned, we will be using Mapbox Studio and Mapbox GL for bringing our map on the internet. So I've already opened Mapbox Studio. In order to get here, you need to register for free at mapbox.com. The service is for free until you hit a certain number of views on your maps, which is high enough that for a small community, you should be fine with the free tier. There are styles, tile sets and data sets in Mapbox. Styles are basically maps. A tile set is what we will be using for our data and data sets is an alternative that you can use if you want to be able to edit your data in Mapbox Studio. We will be editing our data in Quantum GIS so we don't need data sets. We will be using tile sets instead. There are a number of default tile sets which are the real world so they are of no use to us here. And I have already imported a lot of tile sets for my Dragon Eye world. For this tutorial, we will load new tile sets in here. And as you see, I, all I've done is take the GeoJSON files that we exported them, rename them so that I can find them again in my Mapbox Studio and delete them after the tutorial. And we will begin by importing the base map, which is the biomes geojson you just open it upload it it will take a short while to upload and to process while it's uploading we can already upload the next and we will work with the rivers as well so that we get our base map set up before we add all these states and towns and all this additional information and as you can see, it, it uploads pretty fast. Okay, welcome back. Processing took just a few seconds. I was doing something else. That's why it says here six minutes ago. We now have our basic data and we want to include them in a map. So we will create a new map saying new style. And the templates here are all with real world data. So they are not useful to us. We will instead start a style from scratch. And we really have a completely empty template. Now remember that we did not have ocean tiles. We deleted them or we didn't set them to anything. So we need to put the background to some nice blue, whatever suits you because then everything will work nicely. 
And then we can begin to add our data using this plus button here. We add by layers. Every layer is a tile set plus a style and you can add the same layer several times, which can be useful sometimes. I mean, you can add the same tile data several times and then style it differently, for example. So we will add our two tutorial data sets that we uploaded for the beginning just to show how it's done in basic. Now the tutorial biomes includes polygon data which we add here and then we add a second layer using the rivers and it detects automatically that this contains lines and then here in this data view we just see where we have data information at all and we can click here to get the information that we want and as you can see here we did include the biome and the color information which will be useful now to style everything so after we've added the data we go to style and then we can style our layers and since we do have the color information it is very easy to just click here on color and for the fill color say we use a formula we choose a data field we use a color data field and we have all the colors as we had them in Aska's fantasy map generator with the exception of these lakes because we deleted the cell information from there so what we can do is we can add here a data condition choose the color field and now mapbox studio tells us if the data field color exists then we will use the color that is perfect that's what we want and the fallback value if the data field does not exist this we will clear out and instead set it to some a little bit more bright blue. And there we have our basic biome data. We can now do the same for the rivers. We can say we want them to be blue, of course. And we see that they are very very small which is not what we want so we will set them to a certain width let's say five pixels and then we see that this the simple approach doesn't work because they are always five pixels it's every size we use a feature in mapbox called style across zoom range and we can say that for example at zoom 2 we want them to be just one pixel wide which will look like this and at this zoom level which is about zoom seven we want them to be five pixels wide and if we zoom in even more add another stop it will always add at the current zoom level but i just like more round values so at 12 we want it to be 10 pixels wide maybe even more like this and then we are done we can see that they now scale up as we zoom in giving the impression that they are actual of actual thickness here okay and that's basically how we get our data into into mapbox studio don't forget to publish so the next tile sets that we want to upload are for our states our countries which we will turn into a nice overlay and for our towns because this is a point layer so that i can show you as well how this this works as a point layer again we upload this it will process for a few seconds should be really fast because they are pretty small I can already go here wait for it to finish because then we will load it into into our style so our data has been loaded and we can now add it to our mapbox in the same way as before we select our layer here this is a 
polygon layer and we also add the towns layer which is a label layer and here we can already see that we have different types available we will come to this in a second for the moment let's do some styling at the moment we just have this black layer which overlays everything fortunately we do have here the color data field as well and what we want to do is if we want to make it an overlay we simply reduce the opacity to something like 0 0.5 and then we can see that we here that we have a, a color overlay here and play around with this until it looks the way that we would like it to look and we can also turn off layers this we can also do in scripting as we will see later now for our towns there are a few things that we want to do aside from making them see more like towns are marked on a map we could also apply zoom dependent scaling here i will leave this out for now just to save some time but one thing we want to do is we want to add this towns layer a second time but this time not as a circle but as a symbol and when we do that we have the option to select a text field here that will give us the text that is shown and what we do is we simply select the burg field uh, Macbox will automatically convert this to a string and as you see with a few clicks we have the names of all our towns and cities right next to them we can work a little bit on the placement I can say maybe put it put it below the dot and that's how easy we can add our town information here again to this layer we want to add some styling across zoom ranges so that the text is smaller when we zoom out now we probably want to use a different font all of these things we can easily do here select different font for example it's very simple just just any just to show you how it's done there we go so this is how we can add one by one all of our information to the map play around with it until it looks the way that we want it to look with all the information that we want it to contain and as you can already see here i can zoom in in and out i can pan around this is exactly what we want to do except that we now need to move this out of mapbox studio and into our own web page before I do that, however, I want to show you what you can do and I will be using the world map for Dragoneye for this, which as you can see is a little bit more complex. I am using several ocean layers here, which give me these lines where you can see different depth around the uh, the landmass this is created simply in QGIS with the buffer function then I am using a, the biomes layer just with the, my own custom colors I'm using a river layer my rivers also have names which is made in basically the same way as we did for the map so just import the layer a second time as a marker layer and for line strings as, as rivers you have an option to place it just along the line string here then I have my roads imported as well I have different types of roads with different styling applied um, all of this is basically just just the same features some of my roads also have names then I have towns here as you can see the same way uh, the only thing that is different that I've done a lot more work into details here which I will 
be presenting in the next part of the tutorial. So in addition to the towns that Asgar has created, I've, I also have villages and small local roads and even individual buildings which are created in uh, Vatabu City Generator. This will be part of a later tutorial. But just so you see what is possible here with this, with this generator, there are a lot of options that you have to make a really, really beautiful and powerful map. And I have also a lot of uh, layers which are uh, out, which are not visible, which are hidden at the moment. Making your map available on the internet is really very easy with Mapbox Studio. When you are in the styles view, just click here on this share link and you will get a, an address a URL that you can just copy, open it in a new browser window. And here is your interactive map in a web browser. You may notice that the towns are missing and that is because of one very common mistake when you are working. You always need when you are ready and happy with your changes, you always need to publish them. And it will show you new publishing that's it and the next time you reload your map there are all your towns or whatever other changes you made now this is the it, this is probably enough if you just want to share a map with your players for example but in the next part we will go into the more advanced mode and embed this map into our fantasy wikipedia the first step in embedding our map is to leave Mapbox Studio and go to the main Mapbox website. And there under products, you will find different platforms. Yes, there is a mobile platform and it's actually quite good. But for the moment, we will be using the web platform. And here you will find instructions on how to use the Mapbox GL.js or the Mapbox JS, which are JavaScript libraries that you can use in your website to embed a Mapbox map very easily into your website. And you see here that you have all the interactivity that we had in the Mapbox Studio, that you can zoom, pan, move around, all the things that we are used from Google Maps you have here in these JavaScript libraries. And this we will be using in the next part to embed the Mapbox map that we created here. Now having our data in a map that we can surf on the internet is one very good important step, but we also have additional information that we want to show. And it is not always just that we can add a small pop-up to the map and it will tell everything. In order to build an entire atlas of the world, we will in part three of this tutorial, combine the Mapbox map that we now created with semantic media wiki. And the end result will be something very similar to fantasy Wikipedia. If you want to support this project or if you want to support my game world that I am building with these tolls, the Dragon Eye world, then click on this link, follow me on Patreon. And one of the things that you will get is early access to the next tutorial video. Thank you very much.